The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, Basil Chapman here on Friday, the 7th of December, first uh, first Friday of the uh, new year, 2022, and we're looking at uh, the Dow down 29 at 36,209. So the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave is where we start to get a little cautious, and right here we've been taking money off our long position. On Wednesday morning, I blipped out for my newsletter. I had it all written in to say we're going to uh, we're going to switch from the long side to the short side, and we'll have and I would have and I, and then I uh, if certain conditions are met, but we're going to start off by actually adding the short side to the long side just for a day, and if certain conditions were met, the one would be taken off. And we would just be left with the other. I never did that. I blipped it out and said, you know, there's just one day. There's still strength in the in the Dow. Look at the nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average. So it's a very selective bifurcated market. We've been long, uh, and we want to stay long as long as possible. That's the objective, of course. And uh, we stayed in, and I missed even uh, even intraday as I was on the road going to to New York. Um, I, I saw these things happening after the Fed came in and the, the Dow just kept slipping. I went from up 100 and something down to, I went to uh, plus 45, then I was watching it plus 13, then it started to go minus. I said, oh man, I should stop somewhere and say, Let, let's quickly switch right now. But of course, they would have been silly. Um, and I had to just watch it. But this is very interesting. Look. The 9 is still well above the 14. The stochastic only now has gone under 80%, and the MACD itself is still strong. So it's saying to me that there is residual strength and that there should be some kind of a bounce. I suspect the bounce won't get beyond 36,500s. It'll be a bounce. And over a period of a couple of days, going to maybe Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, if there isn't a really big sharp sell of today to get that nine, the green and the daily chart down towards the black 14 period moving average, I, because to do that, you really would have to see the down under 36,000. Um, I think it's going to take time. That's all. I think we're in. Look, the Dow, by the end of the day, I might have to call this a sell signal. It hasn't given it yet on the daily chart. Weekly chart is still in a buy mode. Uh, in fact, the MACD did cross positive this week. Uh, we'll see how it closes at the end of the day. And the monthly chart is in leg E, right up against the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So I, I've just been saying caution, caution, caution. We've raised a lot of cash. We're waiting to, for, for some of those really big, big stocks that we love, and we haven't got in. I, I want to want to get into him. I also have to reassess to see whether the, some of the stocks that we are in the technical area, meaning medical technology, that that sort of scientific uh, technology, um, that have done unbelievably well, went to all time highs just recently, and now pulling back sharply. Whether or not this is time to get out of those completely, we've taken big profits there. Uh, this is going to be an interesting thing. I want to take a little time because it's such an important couple of days that we've got here. The S and P, look. That is a much deeper decline from 4818.62 all-time high on the fourth. On the daily chart, peak F, I, I, draw, I drew this in, that expanding wedge formation. And look what happened. We took it right out. And even to this moment, the nine hasn't crossed under the 14 period. Look how long it takes and how many points it takes, to, let me say, say it that way, for that to cross negative, negative after being positive. The MACD crossed negative. Stochastic's down a week at 69%. On balance, volume's weak, yet the price in the S&P is still holding well. But the long-legged doji says, if by Tuesday, Tuesday, there is a close below 46. I'm just going to say 46.68, just in that 46.60s area. There's a close below that. It's all over for now in the daily chart, and that's going to impact the weekly chart. And that says that this digestive phase, 
I'm not saying how deep it's going to go, but I am saying that it's using it's going to use up time as well as price. And look at the QQQ right at the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone. Peak A looks like a peak A minus going to be uh, notated right here. 408.71 was all time high. The 22nd of um, 22nd of uh, November, I discussed the potential for. Uh, uh, a head and shoulders pattern. This is such an aberration of, of of that pattern. I would prefer just to go with the Chapman methodology and say that second arch formation in the M M pattern, right there at the Chapman inside track repellent zone, being just repelled at that level, uh, coming down to the 380 level yesterday. Now 382, almost 383. Just down one. That says, yep, here as well, there could be a bounce, but it looks to me in the weekly chart that we have started the undertaking of seeing the, a sell mode in the daily and a sell signal in the weekly maybe being upgraded by early next week to a sell mode in the weekly, but we haven't got there yet. And look at the monthly chart, G slash C in the notation of the Chapman Wave methodology with that 4871 all-time high. Let me just get rid of that because that wasn't updated. And um, long-legged doji for December. January is a big red candle so far. And what, we're only five trading days into the month so we can't say but all i can say is that a close under 27 270 which is the nine period exponential moving average also takes out the uptrend up channel inside track support zone in the weekly chart and of course that would say that you've got an, as yet another one to one to the expansion to the downside so all, all i can say is that if the qqq um, by wednesday of this coming week is not trading in the 390s, uh, there's a real problem, and that problem is going to remain for a little while longer. However, I do see internal strength in certain sectors, certain stocks, and because of it, um, there is a, a situation where if you are selective, and I'm going to go to that in a moment, for instance, in the den, folks, the den is just a wonderful medium here, the Tiger Financial News Network den, that's just our, our chat room. Uh, it's not really a chat room. People go, don't go chatting away. We talk about stocks, etc. And um, a couple of, or one in particular, one of, one of our dinners said, I really like VIAC, Viacom. That's the B shares, I believe. Um, and it came in. It was somewhere in the, I wouldn't be surprised if it was at the 29, 30 area. And now it's at 36 in leg E. A couple of people hopped on board or had already uh, targeted it. I spent some time talking about telephone, all in the media, uh, telecom media area, uh, telephone. And I said, that is an incredible move in telephone, especially when so many people are looking to, uh, maybe they've already done it and now they're just kind of stuck, are, are moving to different resources in order to get their cable and the internet, etc. So all I can say, this is a spectacular move in telephone, going from 22 up to 20, 26, it's at 26.38 right now, 27 cents, made a peak C, right at the 200-period uh, exponential moving average. These are kind of impressive. And then what was the other one? Comsa, Com, SCA, that's Comcast, if I can ever, 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 CMCSA. Yep, I did it, good. If I can ever get it right, type it in correctly. Comsa, Comcast, A shares, media technology, trading at 50 off the low of 47.45. You know, I like that Viacom, and I would say if anyone is in it or is looking to get into it, then you pull back towards the 33, 32 and a quarter area. I'd say that's a nice step and stop. Just add to your position or maybe get a new one. I'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. I, I, I've been asked a lot of questions. Could I go through some of the overseas indices? Could I go through, uh, I, I discussed SDZ, Constellation Brands. I think it was on Wednesday when I did my show before I left. Um, and a couple of things, others, Costco, uh, the RTH, the retail, uh, and the XRT, also retail area. So let me just do this. Let me finish up here. The dollar is going sideways. It's trading between 96.94. And basically, 95, let's call it, what was that low on the uh, 30th? It was around about uh, 95.52. Very narrow range, rectangle formation. However, in the rectangle formation, we've seen this in the queues as well, can last a lot longer than your patience. But when it breaks, it can have one quick spike to the upside if the consolidation is at the higher level of the trading range of the uh, over the past 100 bars or so. And in this particular instance, we're looking at uh, since uh, mid-November, it's been uh, end of November, it's been up in that, in that higher range trading in this one point to one and a half point range. Now, my suspicion is that the dollar could have maybe one pop to the 96 and 90s again, but that's not the issue. The issue is that this pattern invariably resolves itself by breaking the support. How long it does that? A whole bunch of factors come into play. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is at 56% very weak. The nine period has gone uh, today. It's just showing an S, yet it's in the trading range, uh, going between sell and buy as uh, short and long, short and long. This is the way these notations are in the Chapman Way methodology. Nine goes over. The 14, it goes L, and when it goes under, it goes S. And look what we've got. We've got a um, from the peak D in the 96, 94 range. How important are peak Ds? Let me just show you something here while I'm thinking about it. I think that's correct. Yep, there's a peak D right there in the, uh, and this is Technical Friday. So let me show you something. From the low that was made at 937, 38, uh, the little doji candle, 46. 7500 low on the e-mini look what happened it ran all the way quick move peak a briefly one bar and then boom to leg b at 46 98 50 and then it stalls and then what does it do it makes this cup formation within a rectangle 
I've just drawn this in so many charts lately that you've just got to respect this as a technique that can really help you. Technical Friday, so we're going to go through some of the technicals, take a little time for that. And look at the left side, right side price time match. Let me just draw you. Look, this is the vertical line right here at, oops, let me just move it over. This is the vertical line at 9.43, is it? 9.46. 9.46 with a high of 46.9850. And look at the same line right here at 9.56. Look how weak. The MACD is okay, but it's starting to turn down. The stochastic's okay, but it's much lower than it was. On balance volume is starting to turn down. And within three bars, kaboom. Everything goes down, and all of a sudden you're trading from that 90, uh, four, four, seven, wasn't it 70? Yeah, 4699.50, down to where we are now, 20 points lower, almost 20, 46 points, 40, 46.77. So that's how important these Ds are. Yep, you got a G there, but I'm also saying Ds where you lift your foot off the accelerator for a moment and assess and say, well, can we get an instant restart? What can we get here? And that's where we become a little bit cautious. So here we are. We're looking at the dollar. And the dollar's been since the uh, 30th, I think I said, of, no, it can't be the 30th, 24th of, of November. It's just been in a sideways range. And I suspect that it's going to come down. So now let's look at gold in a little bit more detail. Gold went to peak A, peak B, peak C. And then almost like a peak C1, C2. I'm going to do this. It isn't quite, but I... In the Chapman Wave methodology, this is a pretty legitimate peak C1, C2, a very quick pullback, and then goes right back to within just pennies, or in this case dollars, of the previous high. And it, it, everything starts to turn down, coinciding with um, the d potential double top, peak C1, C2, C2 acts like a D. And look at the MACD turns down, stochastic turns down, on balance volume turns down. So here we are. This is so critical for the dollar. Look at this trend line. And it's turning into a Chapman wave inside track buy. This is, the, this is usually the buy zone. If it fails, it becomes a repellent zone. So this should be the propellant zone. It was for a moment. And now look what happened. Came back sharply. I suspect that we're looking at the sideways move here in the a kind of a rectangle formation also within the – let me just extend this. You see this inside here? I, I, I don't like messy charts, but sometimes I have to keep things in for display purposes, even though uh, I'm looking at it slightly differently, but just for educational purpose. Look, we're still in the rectangle. And all I can say, if the dollar on a week, if the gold on a weekly basis closes under the low that was made in the week of the 17th, 1753, that is really poor action. However, if it's able to not close under, huh, it's already there. Let's go, not this Friday, it's called next Friday. Let's give it a whole week. If it's able to close above 1798, I'm just going to say 1800. If there is a close over 1800, regardless of what happens intra-week, next week is Friday's close, a week from, uh, basically a week from today, as we're speaking, but uh, at the close. If gold actually manages to rally sharply, as the dollar comes back down, I think we have, with the, with the talk of inflation, although with the jobs today, 200,000 weaker than it was supposed to be at 199,000 instead of the 400,000, I'm suggesting to you that the Fed is stuck between a rock and a hard place. We used to joke Iraq and a hard place, but now it's a rock and a hard place, the traditional expression. Um, they want to. They don't want to start raising rates when we've got numbers like this. But if the earnings, the hourly earnings, are starting to rise, there are a whole bunch of things that are going going right for the economy, together with the fact that if demand for businesses, etc., is increasing, you would normally see rates rise. Well, look at the rates. Look at the TLT. The TLT is at 142.60, plummets from 10 points from the 152.90, over 10 points, from the 152.99 area that it was at uh, just the beginning of December, 
That means rates. Now, did I keep that? No, I didn't. I'll do this what I do for my subscribers to my opening call over the weekend when I do my overview uh, long. It's almost like a webinar. I try to get as much in as possible. It's almost uh, sometimes I can go almost an hour because it's, there are so many. This is such a critical level. So many people want to know, what do we do? What do we do? And my contention is that in the long term, we're only in leg B in this S&P. In the Chapman Wave methodology, somehow, some way, we should still go to a peak C, higher peak C. We haven't even made a peak B yet, but a higher peak C, and then a higher peak D. And then we've got to be very, very careful. And that takes us all the way through the first quarter or more. Um, so 21.09 is 2.109 is the yield on the 30-year T-bond. The FYX, the TNX, the brown one, screamed to the upside. It's at 1.75 right now. And this is leg A, B, C. This is leg D in the weekly. This is only a leg A in the 30 year, but leg D, what a mix of things. And look at this, this is E, A, B, C, D, E in the five year, which is overlapping. I mean, this is incredible what we're looking at at 1.4. Nine in the five year. That's it, it's a yearly high, more than a yearly high. I'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at tfnn.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ADC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're looking at TYX, the FEX, the TNX, and look at this. Look at that breakout. 
Uh, that, I mean, that basically is just saying that yields at this particular point are now in an uptrend in the weekly chart. They've broken the downtrend. Ooh, this is something to keep uh, keep in mind. I'm going to just get, take one second. Yeah, I need to click on this particular com this computer on the left side. Look at the one on the right side. Uh, yeah, a couple of questions. TNX, yep, at 1.757%. Thank you, 23 Build. Uh, we're also looking at you. Give me one second. I've got this coming up. I wanted to do a couple of things. Yep, Technical Friday, so I needed to do this. Give me one second. Got that. Now I need to just click on my very old, old system on oh, this particular computer. I just love it. Windows Live Mail. Uh, 2012. I, I still love it. It does exactly what I want. It is so easy, except it does have a little problem now and again. And I wanted to check Paul sent uh, T-Mobile has taken over the phone business. They're tied to the, oh, corrupt Dems, really? <laughs> All right, I'm not getting to the politics here. Looking much better today. So T-Mobile, I'll get to them in a moment. But look at this. The iShares Wood uh, is the symbol, W-O-O-D, is the ETF symbol for the global timber and forestry ETF, holding quite nicely near the highs. Uh, it's 91.58, up 40 cents right now. Uh, peak A, B, C, I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, but what we are looking at is that the um, Philadelphia Housing Index is pulling back a little bit, but it's still closer to the highs. And that's really what I'm talking about when I say bifurcated means that some of the um, some of the action we are seeing, even within a sector. Now, let me just go to this. I'm going to just close this out. Yeah, it's shown it. So close workspace, save. Yep, I'll save. There we go. Yes to all. Uh, here we go. So I, is it T Muzz? I'm, tr I'm trying to think. Uh, T Mobile. T-M-U-S, I looked at that as well the other day. Yep, there it is. Uh, T-Mobile, didn't finish notating, goes to a peak C in the daily and then pulls back. And that's exactly what I was talking about. The reason why I, I stayed away from this one um, is when I was looking at perhaps what could work, is this one, really, look at the monthly chart. Look how deep the, the decline is from the doji candle high. Uh, and this just says to me, this one is under a lot more pressure, and the monthly, actually, this is the whole month, I can't talk about it as if it's closed, but the, the S is for sell um, in the monthly chart, but we've got to wait for January. This is just saying, at this particular moment, with a whole month to go, three weeks to go, uh, it's not acting well, and the weekly chart has got the dreaded H pattern. So the other ones, are the, are the more in the media, like Viacom, uh, more like telephone, very nice Verizon. I didn't do that one. Verizon, very good action. Uh, right at the 200 period moving average for Verizon. Not not a great, but it has been stuck in the rectangle formation. That rectangle formation says, my rule of thumb is, watch when it goes to the bottom. If it holds the bottom, it can start a, a, a track towards the top. question I had was, could I look at some of the steel stocks? Have I finished everything else? No, I haven't. But uh, let me just do that for now since I, I, I tend to forget about the questions because I get so busy with everything else. Let's look at the SLX, which is a SEAL ETF. Really nice rebound to peak C um, at 50, 55. It made an all-time high of 68.42 back in. This is that sideways action with the double top cup formation, and then bam, it goes right under it. And that, 50, that May 14th high, week of the May the 14th high, now we're way down. We've gone to the 50 level. We're up at 55. 5, 10 percent is not bad. It's holding quite nicely. But look at U.S. Steel. Look at that move. Uh, 22, just under 22 to over 26 trading right now, 24.70. And I suspect this is the kind of flurries that you're going to see in the different sectors. And we're seeing that right now with the steel stocks. U.S. Steel trading down 8 cents at 24.69. Just three days ago, it was over 26. That's almost a 10% pullback. And yet, look at that move from the from the downside of 20. Let's call it 22 up to 26. That's four points. That's nearly 20%, 18%. So what we are looking at here is you've got to consider exactly what's going on in each one. Cleveland Cliffs, CLF. CLF, same thing. Fantastic move from just about 19, under 19, all the way to the 24 and a half, just under 25. Now it's at 23, 24. And you can see it's done this so often. And what I'm saying is treat the character of what you're looking at as the character going forward. 
You know, a lot of people say, don't think about what it's been, think about what's to come. And I say, no, what has been can tell you a tremendous amount because look, Cleveland Cliffs has basically been in a rectangle formation and a, and a rectile, we'll call it. So what we're looking at here is, look at this. Um, has, has a spike and then comes down, has a spike to 26s, back to the 19s, up to the 25s, and now it's pulled back. And look at the rhythm. Zoop, zoop. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bars from 26.51, back again to the exact, to the penny top. For seven points from, from 19, I mean, that's a huge percentage, right? And then it comes all the way back and goes to the same price to the downside and then all the way back up and I'm just saying to you please keep in mind that these patterns repeat and you now the risk is at 2337 that a chunk of the upside move is, has, has been made and now has to pull back a little bit to reestablish a base in the 2221 area and then maybe it starts to move above 25 and then it gets reversed again I don't think so I think that the body of trading in the in the candle says that this could start to fail kind of round about here, and then you start to get your big red candles coming in. So please, any move in, in Cleveland Cliffs, flat roll steel, iron ore pellets, took over AK Steel, which we used to use as a trading vehicle, any move that closes above 25.25 says fabulous action. No, we want to go towards 2650s and then come back down again, or maybe even break out. But at this particular point, I think this is a, a, an emotional thing saying the 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 um, uh, plan of the plan of the infrastructure I just don't see this plan being implemented right now I think it has it's stalled and it's going to stall for a little longer to keep that in mind let's just have a look at CX that came in a few days ago and I forgot to look at it yeah this ran up to peak E peak F and now it's pulling back from peak F in the Chapman wave methodology this is uh, CMEX SA, this is a Mexican um, cement company. Uh, when it comes to infrastructure, they should re be real winners. But it's pulled back from 6.93 to the 5. Point, uh, it's right now uh, 6.54. And I think it's going to be pulling back a little further. But keep this in mind. This is one of those very low-priced ones that has fabulous percentage moves to the upside. Look at this, 1.55 all the way to 9 uh, back in 2020, going to the high in mid-2021. And then it pulls back about uh, not quite 50%. Not, not quite 33 percent it's kind of in the middle there so keep in mind you've got to be very selective here now a couple of questions came in um cleveland cliffs uh clf and a question came in should i take profits here i would rather let the chart tell you rather than me because the magd is good stochastics at 82 percent on balance volumes weak a little bit what i am going to say is why don't you take a little bit off here at 2326? But if it goes into the gap, the pullback could start to become very severe. And that means a low below the low of three days ago of 2379. Uh, any any trade below 2375, and I'd say, yeah, I take off. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, folks, we're back. Dow's down 65. This is what I'm saying, that there they should be rally attempts, but I, I, the, what I said to subscribers, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see lower highs and lower lows as we're in this consolidation phase. And now we've got catch-up. You know, this is not the catch-up for hamburgers. This is catch-up in the, in the Dow having pulled back for three sessions, um, copying now the uh, weakness of the other indices. And, and that, to me, says a lot because now we're getting great selectivity. Look at the SMHs. Oh, wait, I didn't finish. I, I have to finish. We went to gold, and now I want to look at silver. I had a question. Could you please finish all the commodities? Look at this arch formation, the dreaded H pattern. And that's just saying to me, you've got to be even... That's what I've been saying. Bifurcation is everywhere. It's even within sectors. Look, within the metals, you've got gold holding quite well. There's the silver. Look at that monthly chart. That is ugly. Even here, well, it's the first week of January. But it has got an S for a sign to say that the nine period in the monthly has gone underneath the 14. In the weekly, it's already been that way. Way back from the 16th, the week of the 16th of July, we went to cross over negative. What a wonderful tool this is. Now, the next thing we're looking at is the weekly sell mode remains in place. The monthly sell mode in silver remains in place. And that's the reason why I'm saying that there's this tremendous selectivity. And if you put it together with Bitcoin, Bitcoin's trying Every every day it tries to hold and it can't and it's fading. It's at forty one thousand and ninety, uh, forty one thousand one hundred, down two thousand one hundred, and it's just look at this uppercase. It looks like the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down to the weekly peak D, uh, the monthly leg D goes to a peak D. It's the same thing, and I've been saying for a while that we've got to be very selective here. And if you're doing any, if if you're playing any of these. And I can only call it plain because we don't have a, a signal to say the buy mode is even close to in place. Here. There's nothing. It's a sell mode in all the time frames. And that's just saying that money, and this is what happens. The areas that have had the greatest success, when the general market starts to turn down, and that's the reason why gold sometimes, you think it's going to have a fantastic move because the market's pulling back, etc., and inflation, blah, 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 whatever it is. And all of a sudden, your gold stocks are acting very poorly. And you say, why is that? Because sectors that earlier on had a good move sometimes are used to fund um, what the weakness that's coming in. And people want to raise cash. And they raise cash in areas that were good. And now, what I am looking at here is within the Bitcoin, it's gone underneath the left side low. And that's really important. And it says we're going to have a whole week next week. 
in which you want to see Bitcoin, this is the futures, Bitcoin futures continuous contract, close above the low of the week of the 24th of September. I'm saying September. Do you realize that that's, what is that, four months? Yeah, four, four months ago. Um, so that, what we're looking at is, no, five months ago. Almost five. We're into the fifth month. That's 41,165. If there is a close above that, it says, nice, you've got a little bit of support there. But a close, certainly on a weekly basis, below, I would say, 39,500, says, uh-oh, this is a big problem for Bitcoin. Money is now coming out. And that's the reason why it's surprising to see that gold, which, which is now down again, down two points, is not participating as a place to go to. And that says to me that you're starting to see weakness in sectors that have held well. Now I'm going to go to back to this SMHs to say rectangle formation going all the way back from the low of perhaps let's call it November in the 290s, spirals to the all time high of 318.82, the 22nd of November. And what have I been saying for months? I've been saying it's uncanny. Actually, it's for years. You remember even the, pull, the, the drop that we saw uh, over the last, uh, what was it, going to the March during third low where we started to go long of last year of 2020. I said, it's amazing how many times Weeks go by, days go by, weeks go by, even months and sometimes even years. How prices love to go back like a magnet, like it's like like fund managers said, oh, I remember 222, whatever it is, on such and such, and we're at 110. I think we're going back. And then finally it gets 222 within pennies, and then it pulls back. And what did we see? The SMHs went within pennies of the 318.82 November the 22nd high. After going back down under 290, that's 30 points, a 10% correction, kaboom, it has a rally to 318.69 just four days, four sessions ago. And here it is failing. It's down eight right now, 297.97. And that's what I'm saying, that even within sectors, we said, hey, wait a minute, applied materials, was looking fantastic, went to an all-time high in an alternate count F slash C in the 162 area, just above the 159 round number high of the 16th of November. And here it is down at 152. We're looking at... Uh, advanced micro devices and I said when we had a, a, a call a, a question the other day we were in the 155 area and I said you know this looks to me like it's making the dreaded H pattern yes at 132.44 down 379 advanced micro devices peak G in the daily at 164.46 all time high back in the end of November look at the weekly chart peak D I, I might dreaded H pattern here in the weekly and a G slash B in the monthly chart so we don't have to do about the monthly just yet because we have to wait for a lot of things to happen and look at this you've got uh what was that fantastic stock marvel i kept saying what an amazing company all time high of 93.85 great earnings bounces up around about the first week of december gaps up doesn't even fill the gap it goes above it closes above it for a whole bunch of sessions comes back in still hasn't taken out the low of the gap uh, in, going below 80, it's trading at 82 right now. It's on its way in the dreaded H pattern to test very significant support at 80. And that's the reason why we've raised cash, a lot of cash, and we are very selective right now. And all I can say is that when I'm looking at these semis, the SOXS, and I had questions about, it, look how tough it is. I had a buy and then I took it off on Wednesday of the S at the open, I was going to say, buy the S S O X S, the three times short. Uh, what is that? I don't know who that is. I'm not interested. Let me just get rid of that. Right, I mean, I don't know what that is. And I don't even know why it's here. How did that come about? All right. So how can I get rid of this? I don't even see an X here. All right. There, it doesn't matter. Um, what we're looking at is, the SOXS is a 379, 380. Uh, but the day that I wanted it, I took it off the list. I said, no, I'm not going to do anything. Why? I just don't know where to put the stop. So if we had bought at 319 at the open, at the open, uh, that was on, was that Wednesday? When, what's today? Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. Oh, it was Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday at the open of 334. I would have said, let's have, and I would have put in a, a fairly tight stop. It went down to 324. 
So ten cents. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. That's more than three percent on the downside, and now it's trading at three eighty. And this is just saying to me that even in the areas that um, even in the areas that are working towards the short side, it's really tough to actually play this uh, right now. Three eighty. Question came in: Would you buy the SOXS right now? And I'd say I would buy it. But I would not put the same kind of position on I, I would have put before. I just nibble at 380, and I'd hope for some kind of a pullback to the 362 level, maybe to add. But you could have to have a wide stop because even here, it could be a sub buying street. But yes, I do think the SMH is one of the great contests in the two. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. You want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage. The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just real quickly, we've got the wrap-up coming up here. Then, of course, again, to go to Larry and a whole bunch of programming coming up. So let's do this. The VIX index is up one at 20.62. And I had said earlier in the week, if we start to see the VIX close, it has to close and have a strong following session, whatever it is, close above, um, uh, what did I say? I think I said 1980, 1983 to 2035, something in that area. And here we are, 2056. So that's a start. We'll see what happens coming into the close today and, and Monday, especially with the SMH is now starting to tank. And of course, that includes NVIDIA, which was an amazing stock. And now it's got a real problem on the downside. We'll be watching that. So I've got a couple of things I thought I'd do just before we wrap up. Um, 
Yeah, the, I've got a screen a screen and shows this is what I'm showing. Look, there are some screamers that I'm looking at you. How do you play them? You've got DHC, whatever that is, as diversified healthcare, trading at $3.31. Look at that move. And the screamer says it's in the single digits. It should have a nice percentage move if it can go on a strength right, almost at the opening the next day. And here it is. It's down three cents, but it's holding very nicely. The next one was PTEN. PTEN is... Uh, Patterson, uh, something, uh, the energy, very nice doji candle peak, A, B, C, D. It's in leg D. And it's saying that these are stocks that have had good moves and might even continue if certain conditions are met. PGRE, which is Paramount Group, a very nice move up. Look at that weekly chart, single uh, leg A to the upside. But it's A, B, C. A lot of these are in D. Above the 200 period moving average at $9.56 PGRE. So I, I have these stocks and I follow them for subscribers. And every once in a while we grab them to see if we can get a screamer. Uh, we'll see what happens here. And the GOGL, Golden Ocean, Dry Bulk Shipping, holding quite nicely. And NEX was another one. And I've had this for a little while. This is oil, oil fill solutions. So yeah, crude oil is doing very nice. If you do have a crude oil stock, basically based on stock. And the XLF, of course, we spoke about that earlier in the week. Spectacular move, leg D, good move up. Very nice action, leg 